Okay, so we hit the temperatures that we wanted. We got our uh, malt all nice and busted up here. And in case anybody wonders why our beers taste so good, we're making five gallons of beer, and that looks like about half malt. You know what I'm saying? So that's pound for pound a pretty serious drink. So we're gonna go ahead and add our malt now to our strike water and our water ton. And you're just looking for like a relatively even distribution. I'm usually a pretty anal kind of guy, but I guess it really probably doesn't matter anyway. But uh, yeah, just go ahead and get it on in there. And then what you want to watch out for is what they call dough balls. Uh, I'm usually not one for industry terms, but uh, you should be aware of it. Basically what that means is you want all of your grist to be in contact with water. So I'll show you here. So, you know, you see right here, of course, this is completely dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spread this out in a nice even way. Uh, and of course we got our manifold running completely underneath this so when we drain out, we're draining from all sections of the grist and not just one part. I mean, what you don't want to end ever, ever end up doing is uh, just draining from one point and then you're missing a lot of sugar. So we're going to go ahead and just mix all this up. And a dull ball happens when you got something like this, where the grain kind of wants to clump together and then in the center it stays completely dry. Okay, so that, that part of the grain bed will never convert into sugar, it'll be a total waste, might as well have thrown it in the garbage and never added it at all. So like right here you can see. So just go ahead and go ahead and uh, get all this nice and busted up, mix it in really really well, make sure everything's exposed to water, and then once that happens, you're gonna go ahead and take a temperature reading. Now if you haven't taken a temperature reading up until this point, or if you're not sure where you're at, and you aren't hitting what you want to hit, you can do one of two things. You can add boiling water, which will of course increase your total volume in here, which will result in a thinner beer. Or you can do what's called a decoction. And this is a very simple one-step infusion mash. We're just going to be mashing at about 150 degrees for an hour and then boiling. Okay, This is like the simplest kind of all-grain beer you can make. I don't make a lot of these anymore. I've been really getting into like bohemian style pilsners that usually require a few decoctions and have a few different temperature steps. Uh, I'm going to show you the second video just covering those stages because I think they're a lot more interesting beers than making these but of course there's nothing wrong with these. Uh, I just like kind of doing some more of the intense stuff for the sake of doing it. But um, again, if you're a little bit low on your temperature, you can very simply drain some of this wort off, uh, boil it, then return it to the ton. So you're not actually increasing your water volume, but you are raising your temperature. And you can just kind of do that until you hit the temperature uh, you need, or if you have your beer tool software, you can put in the temperature that you're at, tell it how many quarts of water you've added and where you need to be, and it'll tell you how many quarts you need to take off, bring to a boil, and return to the water ton. Um, but, like I said, if, if you have a system like mine, you're going to be heating the water to about 20 degrees over where you want to be. The water ton's going to eat up about 10 degrees, the grist is going to eat up about 10 degrees. So. If you go ahead and subtract 20, Bob's your uncle, you're going to hit your strike temperature every single time. I usually don't stir for this long, but uh, this one seems to be particularly clumpy for some reason right now. But uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead, uh, close this up, wrap it up in blankets, let it hang tight for about an hour. Some guys go 90 minutes. Uh, this, this Maris Otter is usually pretty darn good at conversion, so I'm really not too worried about it going more than an hour. So. We're going to wrap it on up and then we'll start our sparge and that's going to be probably one of the more significant parts of this video. So come back for that Okay, one. so we're about to start the boil off. Now don't skip this, whatever you do. Um, and, and depending on how elaborate you want to get with it, there's, there's folks that are doing this for 45 minutes. I've seen other guys do it for, they have like a two quart and done kind of a policy. Basically what you're trying to do is you're going to crack open your, however your water ton is set up, you're going to start running off your wort. And you're allowing the grain bed to settle. Okay, there's going to be chunks of uh, grain haul and particulates coming through. And the idea is you want to get nothing but nice, clear wort. Okay, so depending on your particular setup, depending on how efficient your manifold is, all is all that, you're going to just keep on running until it starts running clear, which may take just a few quarts, and it might take a lot more than that. In either case, I don't like to take any chances, especially when you already have a couple hours invested into making a quality beer. If you've been doing decoctions and all that, you already have most of your afternoon eaten up just into getting this far. So. We're going to go ahead and crack this ball valve open, start draining off the wort, and all you really need here, in my case, I, I do uh, fly sparging. I don't do batch sparging. There's a lot of folks that'll take um, their uh, their strike, or uh, not strike water, their mash water, 
and just dump it right on in here. Heat this up to 170. 170 is the highest temperature you ever want to hit with, with grain and water. Okay, at 170, that's when you start pulling those tannins we were talking about before out of the hull of the, the uh, grain. And that's when you start getting the bitterness that you don't want. It's not like hot bitterness. It's like actual bitter whiskey face. Your beer sucks bitter. So, um, 170 is the highest viscosity you can get to, so that your wort's going to run nice and clear. So I got my uh, my my mash my mash out water running about 190 right now. So when it hits this, it'll drop it down enough, so we're not going to go too high. So for right now, we're going to start the boil off very simply with uh, just an empty milk jug with the top cut off, and I like to use a slotted spoon. And I'm telling you all this before I start doing it because I might stop talking, whatever, doing two things at once. Um, we're going to fill up this jug with wort from the ton, and then when we pour it back over the top, we're going to use a slotted spoon to evenly distribute it. Now, you get this nice kind of, uh, uh, well, diffusion, you know what I'm saying, through the slotted spoon. The idea is you don't want to actually just dump this straight on through the grain bed and punch a hole through it, because if you do that, you're only going to be draining water or uh, grain from wherever that hole got punched. And the idea is you want that whole bed to come down through and wash all the grain out from all of it, okay? So basically, you can think of this as like a giant sugar cube, and you're trying to rinse the whole thing clean, okay? <laughs> Some guys, too, um, after you've collected whatever you get, you know, if you're, if you're doing, in our case, we're doing a five-gallon batch, we're only boiling it for 60 minutes, so we're only going to be collecting six gallons of wort. There's still going to be some residual sweetness in here. So what I like to do is to take another empty jug, fill that up, get at least another half gallon out of it, and then I'll save that in my refrigerator to make a yeast starter with. After this beer is fermented, I can take that yeast off the bottom of uh, my brew cask. Um, other guys, if you're making a really big beer, if you're making a barley wine or a nice big IPA or maybe some kind of big stout or whatever, <coughs> there's going to be enough residual sweetness in here to make a second beer. So your second runnings is substantial enough to actually create a whole other beer out of it. So don't, don't just throw this stuff away. Um, so I'm going to start the boil off, show you that, and then we're going to go on to the sparge, okay? And they're, they're two separate things and you should know a lot about both of them if you can. So I'm going to go ahead here. Just crack this valve open. We don't want to have a crazy runoff and just blow it out. You know, you're trying to let this bed start to have a nice even flow to it. Okay, if you want to walk over here quick, you can see there's, there's just a big mouthful of grain right up in there. It's the first thing that's going to come out. Uh, you wouldn't want this in your boil kettle. Um, <coughs> and some guys, you know, again, man, it, it depends on how intense you want to get. A lot of folks will tell you, that little bit of grain that comes through, is that really going to wreck your beer? Probably not, but you might taste it. And if you're competitive and if you're really trying to make the best beer that you can, uh, you know, it's important to understand where some things are, you know, contributing flavors that you might not want to have. So uh, what I'll do is, I just very slowly, I mean like this fast, let this start to drain off. And then uh, once I get to a level that I'm feeling good about, maybe about halfway up, I'm going to close this valve again, uh, shake out the little bit of uh, wort that's still on this line, pour this back over the top with a slotted spoon, and just repeat that process till everything's coming out nice and crystal clear. <laughs> a good trick too is to just kind of let this pour down the side of the jug so you can really see if there's any grain coming through. I'm already not seeing any, so I'm already feeling pretty good about this. So I think I'm just going to do maybe one more of these and uh, just go ahead and start running it. And then at that point we'll start pouring our sparge water over the top and we'll just keep right on rolling. Until, uh, until we've collected enough wort to boil with. So, I'm just gonna show you real quick. Got that valve closed now. So we're gonna let that just hang here. And then, see the idea is we're trying to keep the grain bed suspended. So like right now, we still got a decent amount of uh, wort over the top of the grain bed. And I'm just gonna start diffusing this wort very slowly and carefully back over the top of the grain bed. Now a lot of guys have what's called a sparge arm, okay, so they've actually built a manifold or there's something called a spray ball, there's all kinds of things that you can do that helps recirculate your wort back over the top of your grain bed. <laughs> Here's where you get into the pseudoscience. There's really not a wrong way of doing this as long as you're not, like I said, just blasting your wort straight through. If you punched a hole right through this grain bed, water flows in the easiest path. So it's just going to, you know, drain from whatever specific area you actually punch that uh, hole through. So what I like to do is just move the spoon all over the place and just really make sure that we're washing all the sugar out that we can get. Uh, so I'll do this for a little bit. Like I said, we're going to collect one more gallon like this and then we'll start the sparge.